Okay, so I am going to do a little um, basic tutorial today. Um, I am using a, this is Clover. Clover is my absolute favorite. Um, everyone used to tell me that this hook would slide through yarn like butter and I never believed it until I had it. So Clover is my absolute favorite. I can't stand it if I have to use another hook. And it's a size H, five millimeter hook. And I'm using the Lily brand sugar and cream cotton yarn. And I use this for kitchen mostly, um, but there's some other times I've used it, but I can use it for kitchen washcloths or bathroom um, scrubbies or things like that. But anytime I need to use it for a yarn that's going to get wet, this is 100% cotton yarn, so that works for that. Um, so I am going to demonstrate today um, with this Lily's and, and Lily brand sugar and cream cotton yarn. Um, so we'll just pull the center. Actually, we'll just do this. Okay. So um, I make a loop. Um, I wrap it around. If you see, the, this is the short part. Wrap it around, twist in front over the back and pull through a loop. That's how I do it. Uh, people do it lots of different ways, but that is the way I do it. Okay, so now I have a loop and I'm going to chain. Um, I have done tutorials on that before, but basically you just wrap over and pull through. Wrap over, pull through. So I will chain, make a, a little, I'm doing, um, I'll count them in a second. I didn't even pay attention how many I was counting, but. Okay, so you count your stitches by looking at these little V's. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so if I want to make any sort of a, um, you know, like a washcloth or something like that, you need to have a, a shape to what you're doing. So you need to go back and forth in rows. So basically I'm showing you how to crochet a row. I've taught single crochet, double crochet, um, but to do a row, you go through the stitches. Um, so I did 15. I'm going to just do two more and I'll work double crochets or three more really. That's your, basically your, your turning row, your turning chain. So I did one, two, three extra. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a basic double crochet into the stitches. So I'm going to go over and you're going to go back three. One, two, three. That is your turning um, chain. So I'm going to go through the fourth one and then pull up a loop, go over, pull two, go over, pull two. And that is your first double crochet in the row. So now I will continue through every other one of the chains that you see here. So I'll go over and now this one is connected and right here. You can see the loop that it's connected in. So I'm going to go into the next one. This is the one it's connected to. You can, when you pull up the stitch, you see where it's connected. You go into the next one. Okay. So go through, pull up a loop, go over, pull two, go over, pull two. So I will do that all the way down to the very end of the row. Now, um, when crocheting in rows like this, you have to make sure that you get to the end of the row. And this is where, when I was first learning to crochet, I made my biggest mistakes. Um, the very first blanket that I ever did, I don't do blankets very often because they take forever and I lose my attention span. Um, but the very first thing I ever crocheted for real, other than practicing these little rows like this, was to crochet a blanket for my son. And um, I kind of like was winging it. <laughs> And I didn't know or understand how to find the stitches that I was crocheting into. So for instance, I'm showing you this first row and that was okay because they were kind of easy to find. But then to count the stitches all the way to the end of the row, I got really confused. So you really kind of have to keep track of your stitches. Um, you count the stitches to make sure that you did the right number. So for instance, I know there's 15 stitches in this row. So when I'm all done, I need to go back and make sure that I did 15 stitches or otherwise it's going to end up crooked. And this is where I'm telling you is my, where my mistake was. There's a piece of fuzz in there. Okay. So you see this that I'm connected right here, but there's still one more stitch. And this is where I used to never, especially when you get into the 
the rows as they're done up, it's really hard to remember or to find where the end of the row is. So you have to do that last one or you start dropping stitches, losing stitches, and it becomes a crooked mess. So that is the end of the row. So then you would have to go back and count your stitches. So we know that these were the chain, this was the chain three that I did to turn to the next row. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now I'm certain that I did 15 double crochets in that row. So now I get to the end of the row and I'm going to turn my work so that I can get to the next row. That means I crochet three chains because we're doing a double crochet. One, two, three. Why do I do that? Because I want the stitches to come up. I don't want them to fold over. It's gonna pull like this if I do that. So I bring them up. Now the stitches will be up just as high with each row. It brings up to the next level. Okay, so I did my three. I'm going to flip the work over and now I'm gonna work going this way. So I go over. Now this was this particular, what I'm doing, I'm not um, including that chain three as a stitch. Sometimes the patterns do, sometimes they don't, but you just read the pattern and it'll say chain turning chain is included as the first stitch or something along those lines and then you'll know that then you would go into the next stitch. But in this case, I'm going to go into the same stitch and I'm not including that as a chain. So I go through and pull up and then I will double crochet all the way across this row. That means I'm going to have 15 double crochets because I'm going through. So now in this case, I'm going through both loops so that I don't get a ridge. If I only go through the front or the back loop, see, this is this is the chain on the top. If this is the back loop, this is the front loop. If you do that, it creates a ridge on the top. Or if you go through the back loop, the back loop will create a ridge on the top. The front loop will create a ridge on the back. But I'm going under both. over. Look at the top. You can see it looks just like a chain. I'm going under both of them. Just the two. Okay. Oops. And pull up. I used to always find when I would watch these tutorials, I would, I could stare at somebody especially when I was just learning, I could stare at somebody doing these um, stitches and it would be mem mesmerizing to me. I could just watch them all day long. Now I watch myself. Okay, so now I'm to the end of the row. That was the last double crochet right there. Okay, this is the chain three from the original. And this is where if that was included as the first double crochet, you would have to use that stitch, but it's not included. So we are not going to include it in the, the row that comes after it. Now, when you get to the end of a row, you should always count to make sure, and I know this, because of experience and if you don't you will end up with a very crooked piece of work so this was my chain three don't count that because I went in and did the first double crochet one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and there we go so now you will continue to do that and make this as long as you want it and that basically gives you a complete square or whatever kind of size maybe small washcloth or a small coaster and um, in another tutorial video, I will teach you how to make a border out of that work so that you have a pretty little um, washcloth or coaster to use um, for whatever you want. And the cotton yarn works great for these because the cotton is um, can be washed very easily. I have um, kitchen washcloths that I have used for the last couple of years and they're still in my kitchen drawer right now. They get a little faded from soap and washing over years, but they stay together very, very well. And um, actually I enjoy them better than a washcloth. So 
Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to comment below, subscribe, like, do whatever so that you can get some updates as I continue to improve on my tutorial videos. Thanks a lot for watching.